Hey guys, so today's video or today's like plural because I'm gonna film a few videos today are going to be all about beauty products. I filmed a epically long like six months favorite video the other day where I talked about everything I've been enjoying all year. It was like 45 minutes long and it kind of got me thinking that those videos get really long winded. Sometimes some of my favorite products end up at the end of the video and maybe you guys don't have the patience to sit there and watch the whole thing. So I think my plan from henceforth is to film maybe smaller videos where I highlight a few products at a time and hopefully that ends up being a little bit better of a way to get the information out to you guys. I'm not gonna go in any particular order but I am filming a lot of them today so I'm just going to get this party started now. I want each video to be a mix of like hair, skin, um, makeup, the little bit of makeup that I even have to talk about, to be fair. I feel like I am so bored with makeup. It's such a small part of like the beauty conversation to me now. It's way more of the frosting and I'm super into the cake, if you know what I'm saying. So if you guys have any products or brands or anything along that line that you think I should check out and might be kind of re-energized by, let me know. And fun fact, to be honest with you, the only makeup that's really interesting to me right now is Korean. So anything in the K-beauty space makeup wise, let me know if you think I should check it out. So the first thing I wanna tell you guys about is this body butter from this brand called Pistache, Pistache. I'm not sure, it's got that little, you know, I'm talking about enunciation line above the E. I heard about this on Instagram. I was just scrolling through one day and this girl who I had just started following maybe a couple of days before was talking about this product. She was also talking about the K. Ali Pistachio Gelato perfume, which I have not smelled yet, but if you guys have, you think I would like it, please let me know. She was talking about mixing the K. Ali perfume with this body butter. I typically do not like sweet smelling body care. The only exception, and I'm gonna talk about this in another video, um, is the Boom Boom Cream from Sol de Janeiro. It has a sweet note to it, and I think the note that I like in that is pistachio. Like it says that that is one of the notes in that fragrance. But typically, overall, don't normally like uh, sweet smelling things. You know why? It's because they smell sticky to me, <laughs> like especially in the summer. Maybe in the winter I could get more around it, but in the summer, like a sweet smelling perfume or body care product kind of takes on this like, kind of smells like someone's breath after they eat a donut. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so I guess what I'm getting at is although I typically do not like at all a sweet scented gourmand body care product, this is one of those really big exceptions because I think what I do like is pistachio. So I blind bought this, just completely on a whim, having no idea what to expect, and I freaking love this. I have certain body butters that I've constantly got in my house, like the Righteous Butter from Soap and Glory. I'm never without it. This is gonna probably be another one of those type of products. Not only because the smell is incredible, it's just oh, so good. But the formula itself is really nice. I think the brand is kind of trying to bring pistachio oil into their line as kind of the key ingredient and in highlighting its hydrating properties. And I would absolutely say that is the case with this. It, it's very buttery, very rich, very hydrating. It's like luxurious. It's not crazy expensive but I will be repurchasing it forever and ever. And they actually have a cleansing shower oil. This I do like, I just want you guys to know in case you see them, I'm gonna link it all down below. I found these on Amazon, but just in case you see this on Amazon and you're wondering if it's worth purchasing, I have only tried a handful of shower oils. My first experience was the L'Occitane almond oil and I like it. <laughs> it's like $45. so. I pick it up every once in a while, but it's definitely not something I love enough to justify keeping on hand all the time. This was a little bit cheaper. I wanna say it was like 20 bucks. Smell is not nearly as good as this. It is hydrating. If I have to pick, I'm going to recommend this one 110% over this. This is nice. Just wanted you guys to be aware of it. If you're into body care like I am and glowy showers, this is a new thing I would recommend adding to your list. I've had some wine today, so ignore me. Somebody wrote me recently asking about my cheeks and it kind of reminded me that I have been wearing this nonstop. I know liquid blush and cream blush is having 
the biggest moment. I feel like that's been kind of the vibe for about a year and a half, which is so funny because I feel like for the 10 years I've been active in the beauty space, blush was never as big <laughs> as it is now as far as like products are concerned. I've tried several liquid and cream blushes. I've never found one that I don't like, but one thing that I think people might be sleeping on, I have no idea actually, I don't watch beauty content, so I'm kind of full of shit here. But anyway, in case you haven't tried this, this is the Love Tint from Benefit. They have several of these. There's like, I think the Go Go Tint, the Cha Cha Tint, the Benetint. Tint. They're stains. You can use them on your lips, your cheeks, wherever you want. And this is the only one I've ever tried. I've actually had this for over a year and I went through a huge phase where I loved this on my lips, like in another video I'm filming today, so keep your eyes open. I have more lip stains I'm gonna speak about, but I did love this. This was like one of my initial first loves when it comes to lip stains. But recently, as of about a month ago, when I started filming again, I started using this on my cheeks and I don't know if it's reading on camera at all. It must be because I was asked about it. But in person, when you put this love tint from Benefit on your cheeks, it looks so natural because it's a stain. Like a liquid blush, I feel like is more opaque and kind of thicker. This is almost like ink in that it's very thin, like watery, but incredibly, incredibly pigmented. So it truly does just create the stain on your cheeks and look like, did your grandma, y'all's granny, when y'all were little ever grab you by the cheeks and like pinch them just to give you a little color for y'all went into Golden Corral to eat supper? Just me? Okay. Um, that's kind of what it does. It looks like you have a freshly pinched natural cheek, real blush situation. So this is really good on no makeup makeup days. Like if I'm just wearing a tinted moisturizer or a very sheer foundation with this, it's the most natural I can get it to look. But even when I'm doing full beat, like I put on when I'm gonna film, it still looks really natural. And the color itself is kind of like a, a ready pink if that makes any sense. It's not that kind of, you know that Dior blush that's super popular, that baby cool pink that's pretty but not natural looking. That is that is not what this is. This is such a natural cheek color, especially if you're around my skin tone, it'll look amazing on you. If you guys have tried any of the other Benefit tints and you think I should try them, please let me know because I'm considering picking up more if I'm, if there's any chance I'm gonna get as beautiful as a blush vibe out of them that I get out of this one. I filmed a video when I was doing all my batch filming. It was a hair care video, kind of talking about how I fixed my hair because this time last year, I was dealing with hair loss. My hair was also very damaged, so the hair I did have was just not in a good way. But definitely the past year, but especially since about March, I have tried so many new tips, tricks, techniques, products, all that good stuff, trying to fix my hair and kind of get it in the best place it's ever been. And that video was long, <laughs> much like my original favorites video that I am now filming in segment. So if you guys wanna see that long ass hair care video, please let me know. I'm considering posting it. It's just, I don't know, people love micro content so much nowadays that I don't know if anyone will sit and watch like a 40 minute hair care video. My hair right now, best place it's ever been in, it's, long, like this isn't all my hair, this is actually an extension. I love the Hidden Crown hair extensions. The one I'm wearing right now I've had for a year and it's still in perfect condition. But my real hair is still in the best shape it's ever been in. Typically my ends get really dry and I mean they break off super easily. That's why I can only get my hair to a certain length because I was never taking care of my ends well. But right now my ends are strong. They're not split, they're shiny, and my hair is very thick and healthy. And I think it's from a combination of many, many things. Like I said, if you guys wanna see a video on what I've been doing to my hair, I will make it. But one of the things I have been doing is using this Moroccan oil treatment. I feel like Moroccan oil is one of those OG beauty products or beauty brands that has been out for such a long time and there's always new stuff coming out in the beauty space and we tend to forget <laughs> about the things that have really been around for a while and delivered great results pretty much the entire time they've been here. And I guess Moroccan oil is one of those things because I've never really tried this brand before. Through all, and I'm talking hours and hours and hours and hours of watching content about hair care. One of the brands that kept coming out from professional stylists especially 
was Moroccan oil. A little over a year ago, this is before my hair loss started, I was introduced, like many of us, to the concept of hair oiling. Long story short, <laughs> the theory is you oil your scalp and maybe your ends, everyone does it differently. And somehow doing that makes your hair grow or it makes it stronger. I don't really know, honestly, because it didn't work for me. In fact, what happened was, I think my hair got worse from oiling my scalp in particular. Adding all this extra oil to my hair, which is fine. I have a lot of hair, but it is fine. So it's it's not strong, it's not durable, it's, it's thin, so it probably breaks easier. I'm just guessing <laughs> based on what I've figured out over the past year. But yeah, adding all this extra oil into my hair and my roots, and then having to wash my hair more thoroughly with more clarifying shampoos, with more regular shampoo. It just meant I had to wash it more often. And even when I did wash it, like I said, it was like, you can't overload fine hair, no matter how much you have. If you put too much heavy product in it, it just looks thin and flat and lifeless and dull. So oil in my scalp did nothing, just make my wash days way longer and didn't do anything for my hair. But what has done something for my hair is taking this oil and I'm almost out. Like I have about this much left. I need to order some more. And I've had this since March, so it's gone the distance. I put this in the ends of my hair, probably on my second or third day of a, of a wash. So I wash my hair on Monday. I'm putting this definitely in by Wednesday and I'm probably hitting my ends with this every day until I wash it again. But what it does do is it keeps my ends from getting so dry that they don't break or snap off or fray or whatever, because I think that is why my hair will not <laughs> or excuse me, it'll grow. I know it grows because when my hair was blonde, I'd get, you know, growth. And when I had extensions or my tape and extensions, I could see my hair was growing, but the ends just never stuck around. So people I think tend to believe their hair's not growing. It's growing, it's just breaking off. Anyway, adding this into my hair care routine religiously a few nights a week, just to kind of stop my ends from getting too dry before I shampoo has changed the game. On wash days, I'm using a regular conditioner. Sometimes I'm using a hair mask. Then there's like leave-in conditioners and serums. Like my hair gets loaded with moisture on wash day. But then throughout the four, five, six, seven days before it gets washed again, my ends inevitably dry out, especially when I'm putting dry shampoo in. It kind of falls, gets my ends break. Anyway, <laughs> this is why my favorites videos are so long. This, 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 this has definitely been this and one other thing, which I wanna talk about in another video, uh, have been, I truly think, what has changed my hair for the better, forever and ever, amen. So if hair oiling like in the scalp is not working for you, and you haven't tried just doing this as like a leave-in at night, try hair oiling that way and see if it works. I'm wearing a robe right now. I'm kind of filming exclusively in robes because I'm at that weird place postpartum where like my maternity clothes are too big and my regular clothes are a little too small. So it's robes all day and twice on Sunday. And I'm still sweating my gnarlins off. So like I've said a hundred times, I was recently pregnant. I had my son a month ago and throughout my entire pregnancy, there were so many things I couldn't do that I was looking forward to doing, like sleeping on my stomach. And um, actually that's the most of it is being able to sleep comfortably. <laughs> One of the things I was missing doing the most without a doubt was using beauty devices. I pretty much didn't use, yeah, I didn't use any the whole time I was pregnant. And the second I got home from the hospital with my baby, like first nap he took when I was in my house, I was like pulling out all my devices, charging them, getting ready to use them again. If you don't know, hi, I'm Whitney and I'm a beauty device addict. If it's a gadget or a gadget that I can plug into a wall and it will make me prettier, I wanna buy it. My favorite device or the one I've talked to you guys about the most is the MyoLift Mini from 7E Wellness. I'll link all the information down below. It is a microcurrent device. They have the Cutie, which is kind of like the smaller, more, I don't know, Sephora friendly type of device. Like it's more similar to something like the New Face. But the MyoLift Mini is a workhorse. It does so many things. You can plug all kinds of, I guess you can plug attachments into the Cutie also. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I just tend to like the MyoLift Mini the most. I don't know why. While I was pregnant, they released two new things and this is not sponsored that I know I'm making this. I just want you guys to know if you have bought this device on my recommendation or considering it, I'm just trying to spread the good word. They released another mask because the great thing about the MyoLift Mini, as I said before, is all the things it can do versus something like the new face. You can plug 
these kind of like masks into your MyoLift Mini and strap them on wherever they're designated to go and get a microcurrent treatment, totally hands-free. This is the Jowl mask. I have it on its little backing right now, but basically you can put this right here, plug it in to your device and run a treatment and it will snatch the Everlobin crap out of your jawline. In fact, when I first got the MyoLift Mini and was talking to you guys about it, I think I've even mentioned this on a live stream with 70 Wellness before, we're in the era of the jaw filler. Tons of people are getting jaw filler. I'm not here to talk you in or out of it. I would suggest, however, trying a good microcurrent treatment around your jaw and seeing if that changes your mind <laughs> because you can carry a, a lot of fluid in your jaw area and microcurrent is really good at helping removing and like kind of doing lymphatic drainage on your face. But also sometimes the area around your jaw can just kind of get a little droopy and saggy and microcurrent will snatch it right up, especially the more you use it. So this right here, oh, I'm so glad when I saw they came out with this because my jaw and um, my turkey waddle <laughs> are the areas I really go in hard with microcurrent. So this is one of the things they launched that I think is really cool. And they launched their, oops, give me for that. And they launched their gua sha tools. I was doing gua sha with my, my it's, they're dirty, I'm sorry. I have conductivity gel all over them because I've been using the crap out of them. But I was just using regular stainless steel gua sha tools for a while. Um, I actually had a meeting with 7E like last year and mentioned that to them because Penn Smith's getting care here on YouTube. She didn't tell me about it. She told her channel about it, but I tried it after she mentioned it, talked to Pooja over at 70 Wellness about it. And she's like, oh, we're already working on our gua sha tools. So this is a freaking, masterful idea. If you like gua sha and you like microcurrent, try doing microcurrent with gua sha. You will see the craziest difference and the texture, not the texture, excuse me, the tightness, firmness, lifting, just overall snatchness of your face when you mix microcurrent with gua sha. In fact, when I was pregnant, the only thing I could do to kind of like make myself not look like a amorphous blob person was gua sha. I was doing gua sha and facial rolling all the time to try to deal with some of the fluid retention in my face. And I thought I got pretty decent results with that until I got back to using microcurrent with gua sha and it was just like, playtime is over, so much better. So I will link all this down below. I'm just want to share the good word. If you guys already have the MyoLift Mini or the Cutie and wanna get some more accessories for it, here you go. If you've never heard of these products, I will try to find at least one video where I've spoken about them before and link it down below. But again, if you're a beauty device junkie, I think you will find that the MyLift Mini is a really good investment because there's just a million ways to use it. So I, for the hundredth time, <laughs> just had a baby. And when I was pregnant, I still got pedicures. Like I will have to get a pedicure for the rest of my life. There's no doubt about it. Cause hello, high maintenance queen. Gotta have feet cute. But I also, have to have my nails done. <laughs> like sometimes there, there's there been like some very small periods of my adult life, ooh, excuse me, where I have um, not had my nails on, but when I don't have them on, I tend to bite my nails, bite my cuticles, it's not cute. Now the struggle is when you're a new mom, you don't have a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of anything. But more importantly, like I was really concerned when my baby got here that my nails were gonna hurt him. So I started looking into press on nails and I wore press on nails, I think when I was like in high school, I think it was the last time that I did that. And they've come a long way. <laughs> there are some really solid press on nails out there. And what I tend to do is put them on when I have to film, like I put these on last night. Did you guys know that if you do your nails a certain way, your little press on nails a certain way, they will stay on for like a week or two. It's kind of impressive. <laughs> if you guys want me to do a video about press on nails, I guess I can, but this really isn't about that so much as it's about brands I have discovered that create really good fake nails or press on nails. If you're not about that nail salon life, which even without a baby, I don't mind getting my toes done. I thoroughly enjoy that, but I, I cannot stand sitting for my nails. Like I cannot be the only one. The two brands I have found, the first is called Static Nails. That's actually the brand I'm wearing right now. This is in the color, I think it's called Fetish. I don't remember. This is like a cool little swirly pattern called Sway White in the almond shape. They've got these like cool little designs on it. I don't know if I'm gonna wear these. I kind of think I might give these to my daughter because they're just a little too 
fun for me. I'm so boring with my nails. My nail salon people are just like, every time they see me come in, they're like, oh, this bitch. <laughs> I get the same thing all the time. It's usually nude nails, white toes. I did mix it up recently and get red toes. How about them apples? Anyway, these um, from Static Nails, like I said, I'm wearing them right now. I'm not wearing this exact color, but they are so heavy duty. Like one of the things I remember about crappy, like fake nails or what I keep saying fake, press on nails from like the early 2000s was they were almost like paper. Like they bend really easily. These are super sturdy. They're very, very tough. They're not gonna um, pop off your hand very well, especially if you put them on correctly, but they don't bend, they don't fold in half, they don't split open or, sh or shatter. They're really, really heavy duty, high quality nails. I got mine on their website. Amazon does have a few of these. Not as many as like their website does, so I don't know if necessarily I would go to Amazon for these, but if you wanna try some really good press on nails, this is a great option. Like I said, new moms especially, you know the struggle. The other line that I found that I really love is Glamnetic. I can't wear these anymore. I wore these a couple times before my baby was born and I freaking love them. They're in the style so classy. Are these not the most like Carmela Soprano nails you've ever seen in your life? They're really long. Um, I don't tend to get really long nails even when I have acrylics on because I don't know, I tend to jam them. You know, like when you're cooking or cleaning, you'll like jam them into your friggin' cuticle and it hurts so bad. Plus they become a little cumbersome. That's a young woman's game basically is what I'm getting at. So having something like this for the press on nail life is really fun and cool to be able to kind of change in and out. But I did try to wear these again after my son was born and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> like they're so long. I couldn't put his little onesie on him, holding him, made me nervous. I was afraid I was like stabbing him. So while I do love these, these might have to wait again until he's a little older because they do make everything harder. The other style from Glamnetic that I love and I love the most is called Madame, like Madame, I don't know. Anyway, um, I have an order of those coming from Amazon right now. They're a much shorter, even shorter than this, um, almond, French manicure. They're really wearable, very everyday. And like I said, if you can put them on correctly, you can have these on for a good two weeks, which is about how long a fill lasts before it looks janky anyway. So again, fake nails. I keep saying fake. All the nails I like are fake. Press on nails have come a long way. If you guys didn't know, I'm just trying to share the good news and run tell that. All right, so that's five products. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna turn the camera off and film five more and then maybe five more. I don't know. If you guys like these types of videos where I highlight smaller amounts of brands and products but I get to talk a little bit more about them without them being super long and drawn out, let me know. I will continue this process, but this for me feels like the vibe. Uh, make sure you subscribe, thumbs up the video if you enjoy it and I will catch you in the next one. Oh. Also, let me know your favorites. I'm dying to know what everyone's doing out there.